Hello, welcome to topic 4 of the Unit Fundamentals of Information Technology. For this week, I'm going to discuss chapter 9 of the book Computer Fundamentals written by Pradeep Sinha and Preeti Sinha. And this chapter it is entitled Input Output Devices. I'm going to have two presentations. First, I'm going to discuss input devices. And the second presentation will be all about output devices. In this chapter, you will learn about I.O. devices. What are those things? And just what I've told you, the first one, we're going to discuss the commonly used input devices. For the second part of this week, we are going to learn the commonly used output devices and other concepts related to I.O. devices. Let's proceed. What are these I.O. devices? These devices provide means of communication taken out between a computer and the outer world. And these devices are also known as peripheral devices. Take note of the term, peripheral devices. Stated here because they surround the CPU and the memory of a computer system. And input devices are used to enter data from the computer user. And it will be processed into a machine-readable form. And it will be processed also in the primary storage or the main storage. And output devices supply results of processing from primary storage to the users. Let's have a diagram in order for you to know the role of I.O. devices in general. Okay, first, as a computer user, you're going to enter data and through the use of the input devices. And the data that you're going to enter will be transformed into a machine-readable form and it will be processed in the brain of the computer. What you have learned last week, last time in the topic, uh, CPU is the brain of the computer, and the machine-readable form will be processed in the memory, and the data will become information, and it will be stored in output devices so that it will be projected in a human acceptable form. So that's the general role of I.O. devices. Let's proceed to the first part. We have input devices. So what are the commonly used input devices? You will see here in your slide, we have keyboard devices, we have point and draw, we have data scanning, we are going to discuss what are those digitizer, we have electronic cards, base devices, and you will encounter also speech recognition devices, and lastly, we have vision-based devices. Let's move to the keyboard devices. What is keyboard? It is a device wherein there are a set of keys, labeled buttons, and mounted in a keyboard connected to a computer system. And in front of me is an example of the QWERTY keyboard, which is, this is the most popular uh, keyboard device. And there are 101 keys of a QWERTY keyboard. So let's have a look. What is a uh, layout of keys in a QWERTY keyboard? On top here, this is escape button, then F1, F2, there are function keys. That's why they call F up to F12. And you have your numbers. In this part, the right part of your keyboard, QWERTY keyboard, these are the number keys. And you have here the uh, uh, numerics. Okay, so this is the layout of the QWERTY keyboard with 101 keys. Next, point and draw. What is this point and draw? These devices are used to rapidly point to and select a graphic icon or menu item from a multiple options displayed on a graphical user interface screen. So these devices are used to create graphic elements on the, on the screen, such as lines, curves, and freehand shapes. So what are the commonly used point and draw devices we have? So mouse, we have trackball, 
we have joystick, we have light pen, and of course we have touch screen. So let's discuss one by one what is a mouse. Mouse is the most popular point and draw device. So I have you holding with me right now is an example of a mouse. This is optical mouse. So mouse is a small handheld device that fits comfortably in a user's palm. So it rolls in small bearing and has one or more, two or more buttons on the top. Then we have here a term graphics cursor where it moves on the terminal screen in the direction of the mouse movement. And the different applications display the graphic cursor different symbols. Okay. There's also a term known as hotspots. What is this hotspot all about? Take note of this. It is a point where in graphics cursor, irrespective of its size and shape, has a pixel size point that is the point reference to decide the position of a cursor on the screen. When you say pixel size, that is the size of our screen. So kindly search on the meaning of this pixel. Okay. Let's move on. So in front of you now is the mouse. We have the left click and we have the right click. Let's discuss now the types of mouse. The first one we have mechanical mouse. Long time ago, we have this type of mouse where there's a ball inside the center that particularly projects out through an opening in its base. So what's the purpose of this ball? It rolls due to surface friction when the mouse is moved on the flat surface. Then, as the mouse ball rolls when a user moves the mouse, therefore the sensors detect how much each wheel spins and send this information to a computer in the form of changes to the current position. That's the first one, the old type of mouse. Second one, we have Optical mouse, the one I'm holding, I've shown you a while ago, this is an optical mouse wherein uh, there, are, there will be no ball like or wheel, but it has a built-in photo detector. So what will happen here in this uh, particular device, this is the red one, is the built-in photo detector. Okay, when a user moves the mouse, a special pad with grid lines, then the photo detector senses each horizontal and vertical line on the pad and it will send the information to the computer in the form of changes to the current position. Okay, clear? Next we have one, two or three buttons mouse. We, we have here type of mouse where you have multiple buttons but the leftmost button is the main button. It is the default one that allows for most mouse operations. But if you have this type of mouse, one, two, or three buttons, a user can configure another button as the main button, okay? Next, let's move. We have a serial and bus mouse. What is serial mouse? You are just going to plug into the serial port of your system unit. While a bus mouse, it requires a special electronic card. That's the difference between the two. And this electronic card will, will provide a special port just for connecting the mouse to a computer. And now we have wired and cordless mouse. So the difference between wired, of course, it is connected to a computer with a small cord. And you will see in the market, you could buy a cordless mouse. It only operates by transmitting a low intensity radio or infrared signal. So those are the types of mouse we have in the market. Then we have your trackball, and this device is a pointing device similar to a mechanical mouse. And there is what you call a roller ball, which is placed at the top along with the buttons. Let's have a look with this. This is the trackball. We have here the ball rolled with your fingers and uh, here in this part hand we have the button. So this is the image of the trackball. Next one we have the joystick. Joystick is a pointing device. It works on the same principle as a trackball. 
But to make movements of the spherical ball easier, it is placed in a socket with a stick mounted on it. So you need to hold the stick. And then the user holds the stick with his or her hand and moves it around to move the spherical ball. So a user can move the stick forward or backward, left, right, uh, to move the position of the graphics cursor at the desired position. So let's have a look what is this joystick. This one, we have here the stick pointed here. You're going to move it to the left, to the right. Then we have, it's connected to the socket. Then we have here a light indicator. And we have also buttons here. We have one, you're going to control the movement of the cursor. Next, we have electronic pen. There are two types. We have light pen and we have writing pen with pen. So light pen, it uses a photoelectric cell stated here. And there is an optical lens mounted in a pen-shaped case. And the purpose of this pen, it focuses onto it any light in its field of view. And it will detect light emitted from the limited field of view of the monitor's display. And this pen is a finger-operated button. While a writing pen with with pad, this type of electronic pen comes with a special type of writing pen. So user writes in the pad with the electronic pen whatever data that the computer user wants to input in the computer. So this input device with handwriting recognition software is used so often as an easy way to input text and free hand drawings into the computer. So that is a writing pen with pen. And touch screen commonly you have, yeah, for those who have mobile phones, we're using this technology, touch screen. And it is the most simple, intuitive, and easiest way or learning all about input devices. Why? Why easiest? Because you will just choose from the available options by simply touching with your finger whatever desired icon that you're going to touch displayed on the screen. And in our community, we have the automatic teller machine. Of course, you need to enter your PIN number and you're going to press OK. And if you're going to touch, for example, you're going to uh, withdraw a particular amount, even though touch a how much amount that you are going to pay. Just you're going to select and just click OK or cancel the process. Okay, so that is what you call touch screen.